oh my god, I look like I got like, what am I doing today? My skin is like, it's like super dry. It looks so oil. Like the oil is now sitting on top of my skin. For what reason? I do not freaking know. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta bring this closer. Come a little bit closer and look into my eyes. If only for a moment. So yeah, today I look greasy as hell. Um, so today's show is all about, it's a relationship situation. It's all about relationships. Relationships. Y'all, I'm going to have to go on FBF, FBF, fuck being fat. Listen, y'all, it was a girl in St. Louis in 2015 who came to me and told me about FBF. So it's not the same woman that this person is. So I don't know if it was her the lady that I support, or if it's the other girl. Either way, I'm I'm ser- I'm serious. Like I'm with the fuck being fat stuff, but I'm just letting it out because I don't want nobody saying Shantae, you helped her do this or something like that. I didn't tell her nothing. The other person came to me. I was at the church with Joy Stewart, so Joy could have actually did that because they stole in my life. So if whoever the girl is that came up with it. In St. Louis, I'm still supporting you. She was light skinned, tall, and thick. She was like actually a more pale color. Oh my god, look how my body look on this thing. What the hell? What the hell? Instagram be fucking me up. So anyway, um today, darlings, this is just all about relationships. So the first thing I want to start with is Today, okay, y'all, is the story. So today I went and I was with um, one of the per- people at the shelter. And I take care of her like she my sister. So it's like, I'm just like, I'm going to be there for her like she is my freaking sister. Oh, I got to start a video. So I just take her like she, like she like one of my little sisters, like she's small. Why did this girl first tell me? So I can't understand what she's saying. I don't know if she was like. A uh, crackhead or something. I got to start again. Okay, hello, it's Shantae Brown. She can talk on the black unicorns. So, I don't know if, like, she was, like, a crackhead or something before or whatever, you know. But she first, yeah, like, the other day she was like, yeah, because I'll go ahead and take you, eat your pussy. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, is she serious? So, I don't, I'm not shocked because it's not the first time. You know, like, it's not the first time I've been in this situation. So, I just act like... I don't hear what she's saying. Like, she was actually talking to me like a guy. Now, so I made it into a joke because she's like, come on, eat this, come on, eat this cherry with me because you, like, you so fine. You know, like, you so fine. It's like you fine enough for me to eat. You know what I'm talking about? Like, she like, you fine enough to eat with me and you fine enough to eat. So I was like, oh, that's how them niggas be talking to you, don't they? She was like, no, nah, that's how I'm talking to you. And so I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So today she said, she saw me walking, and she was drawn to me. So she said the whole time that I've been there, she just so drawn to me that she is ridiculous. But I'm drawing her, too, because it's like, she's sweet. Like, again, like, I'm sorry, but it's like the crazy people sometimes, the people that you would think would get on my nerves or would bother me. So today I did get on nerves because I, I had to put her out of the house. But it was like, um, and it wasn't a mean way. It's just like we had to go. So it's like, come on, let's go. She said, I'm getting up, girl, or whatever. So it's like, um. But what I'm saying is, the crazy people, you just be like, because she don't want nothing from me but hugs, and she want me to give her stuff and all this stuff. So it's like, I just do it. Like, I'm like, okay, here goes some earrings, here goes Mountain Dew, here goes some candy, you can use my phone. And it's because most people probably don't treat her that way. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, and it's not even that, it's just like, her spirit is kind of good. Like, it's like, not kind of good, it is good. And I think she might be on drugs, but it's like, it's kind of good. And so... Yes, she told them yesterday. She said, I didn't want to leave the house. Like, she's like, and she did. And she's like, so she got put out today because she didn't make it back last night. And she was like, sister, I didn't want to leave the house. Like, I'm serious. She was like, I was really trying to stay here. And that was the truth. She really was trying to stay there. And she was like, you see, because I didn't, because I knew I probably wouldn't make it back by that time. She said, by the time she realized that she had to be back, it was already dark. So she didn't even know what time it was. So it's like, she can't keep the stuff straight in her head, so she can't always make it back. And that was just like, 
the part that I couldn't understand because she was like, if you can't follow the rules, then you can't stay here. And so you can tell that she like might be like schizophrenic or something or something else going on because she can't keep everything in order. The other lady, then it's another lady, every morning she say, she asks the other lady, so you got a call? You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's like, they got into it about the call, and now she keep asking her every day, do she have a call? And then this morning, the other lady had, oh my God, that's what I got to tell y'all about. The woman with the call, y'all, she didn't try to, like, she gonna gangster me yesterday morning, right? So I told y'all about that. So she get back, and she at the table, and she started talking to the sister. So she started saying, I think that's dangerous. So that's what the other lady saying, the tall lady. Okay, y'all, I, I don't know how I can just, I got to start getting, like, like little pictures and stuff so y'all can see. Then that'll help me learn, like, teach over online or whatever. But it's like, I'm like, I got to get some kind of picture. So anyway, the tall lady is telling the lady with the car, right? She like, listen, um... That's what she said all the time. She'd be like, that's so dangerous. It seemed like that's so dangerous. And I'm like, y'all, that's really negative. So the sister was telling us that when she doesn't have directions all the time, because they always asking questions. So the sister, she's like, so what do you do with the, with the if, you don't get, if you don't know how to get there because you don't have a phone? And she said, well, I just stop and ask directions. So the lady say, okay. So she said, that's dangerous because when you asking for directions or whatever, somebody could try to hurt you. She said, no, they don't. She said, I just ask them, and they just tell me how to go. She said, the best part is that sometimes they'll say, I'm just going to drive you there. Uh, you can just follow me. And sometimes it'll be 20 minutes out of their way or whatever. She said, so because I'm a sister, people really help. I was like, it's not the, it's not it. It's like because you positively ask somebody to help you, they actually are helping you. And so it's like, for some reason, because of the situation that we in, because I'm in a, like, a, an abusive situation they think that other people don't help and it's like that is not the truth because my parents are fucking crazy like i'm not joking i wouldn't be nowhere if other people never helped me like i'm telling you y'all like y'all i told i always tell the story like how when my grandmother was like you cannot live on campus you need to stay at home well my boyfriend's mother the when it got me the shaley's mom got me a trunk and then my other boyfriend y'all i'm talking about three i have four boyfriends i'm not gonna lie um, and all of them did something different. So, anyway, like, um, so because my mom didn't believe me just dating one person. So, it's like, okay, date all these guys. So, anyway, um, the Shaley was gone to the army. So, he wasn't my boyfriend anymore. But his mom went and got me a trunk. And she was trying to actually try to teach me how to drive. Then, uh, PJ, God rest his soul, um, because I'm going to give justice for him too. Justice for PJ. But, um. PJ actually went and bought me clothes with his money because he had a job. He was, like, selling drugs. Y'all, why I was selling drugs with PJ, y'all? I'm supposed to be selling a dime bag, okay? This man going to talk about, I'm going to give you, like, 4 or $5. I was like, okay. <laughs> PJ say, don't you ever. <laughs> you, supposed to, you supposed to get the whole $10. I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know what this drug game is. So I couldn't actually be like a drug dealer because I was just too nice. It was so funny. So, and he probably gave PJ the money too because I'm like, why would you do that to me? Because the guy actually liked me. That's the one that say I'll just stick my dick in you and won't take it. I'll stick my dick in you and come on. And so it just, like, I just walked up to him in the hallway. He just, like, so crazy. So anyway, then after that, um, who else? It was like all the boyfriends then Mike came over and tried to help me get to campus or whatever. It was like it's just all hands on deck to get me to campus. And then when I get to campus, y'all, I just break up with all of them like one by one on the phone. Like, don't come see me again. Do not call me again. It's like I was just like trying to get away. So it's like I'm telling y'all, if I never had people outside of my family help me, I probably wouldn't get help. So that's not the truth. Like, I would do that too. If somebody was like, I need to go to this church or I need to go here. And it's like, I know how to get there for real. And it's like, they don't have a phone. Wholeheartedly does not have a phone. I'm going to do the same thing too to make sure they get there safe. If it's a group of teenagers, I'm going to do the same thing. It's like, I don't want you to do that and call your mama. You know what I'm saying? When you get there, what's your mama number so I can tell her? And it's like, I text moms and everything. So I'm not playing. Like, it's like, I hate when people be like, no, it's like so dangerous. So I'm telling the lady, I was like, listen. What you're saying is, like, very negative. Like, it's like, and I'm not telling, I'm just telling the table because I can't talk to the lady because she's too ignorant. 
So she was like, yeah, because if I get pulled up by a cop. Now, listen, y'all, this don't have nothing to do with what we're talking about. Where did this shit come from? She was like, yeah, because if I get up pulled up by a cop, I'm going to have a smart mouth and all this different stuff. Who are you talking? You talking about my sister, Koala. You see what I'm saying? So go play with Koala. Don't come play with me. So uh, <clears throat> that's it. And that, that's something that's happened two days. So they stalked my sister, Koala. So today I was with, at uh, at church or whatever. I was praying, and the girl sounded like Carla. So now they just in the realm of Carla, like my sister. So anyway, I'm just like, why the fuck are you talking crazy? So I'm waiting for this bitch to look at me because I'm finna snap back on your ass. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about at the whole time just looking at like, bitch, say something else. Say something else. She wouldn't even look at me, y'all. I'm talking about I looked at her the whole motherfucking time. Like, ho, say something. You see what I'm saying? Like, don't do that shit. Talking about her daughter's got a smart mouth, all this different stuff. I was like, you know, yesterday I did a, a show on reaction and responding. So what I'm thinking is, is that if you react and you trying to get yourself into an altercation and responding, you could just go ahead and sit there and get, collect evidence to make some money. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, why the fuck you sitting over here doing this dumb shit and you about 60 fucking years old talking about you going to get put in jail for a minor or whatever and this, that, and the other? Bitch, fuck you. You see, I'm talking about, I'm not my fucking sister, ho. Man, I'll be like, y'all be, man, I'm so happy. Because I'm telling you, you would have been another bitch that I would have smacked the shit out of. I'm not fucking playing. Like, I'm like, I don't give a fuck how old you are. I'll beat your old ass up, too. Talking about what her kids do. Fuck your kids. And she talking about, well, I didn't teach them this and that and the other. This is when I was like, y'all in the same fucking breath. Then she going to say, well, I get in my car and pray. I don't give a fuck what the fuck you do. You did teach them to be some low-life ass bitches. You see what I'm talking about? I say train up the child in the way you should go. They fucking grown. They almost 40 fucking years old. You still out here dragging around talking about what the fuck they just said to you. Tell me what I'm talking about. I'm, he, they all say she mean. Well, then, bitch, believe it. If you got six fucking kids and the vote is you fucking mean, then that mean that you mean. Y'all get what I'm talking about? It's like, what the fuck would you think is changing and you know you a mean-ass motherfucker? You see what I'm saying? Even though you selfish and shit. So what the fuck is going on? It be like a hobie really want me to just sit there and listen to their bullshit all fucking day. I told her, I said, you did raise them to be like you. Come on, they not. Then that's what she will. They believe. Fuck you. Shut the fuck up. People be too old for this shit, y'all. I'm not fucking playing. It's too old. So anyway, that's it. On that note, let's move on. So now let's talk about what's what the show really about. So anyway, yeah, because I got to get back early. So, um. Let's talk about the first thing about good relationships. It's healthy breakfast. So this is why I'm telling you healthy breakfast breakfast ideas. Let me tell y'all my reasoning. Because, you know, I miss Eric Henderson, but he is a person that really understands my reasoning. This is the person that I was talking to on the phone with Jadis Pinkett stole, you know, stole my little thing or whatever I was saying to the people. We're going to talk about that shit too. So anyway, healthy breakfast ideas. So what I'm thinking is if you're in a good relationship, you're going to beat out for breakfast. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm that's why I'm asking. That's why I'm telling you this. I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the healthy breakfast ideas, that is actually something that's good. So scrambled eggs or avocado toast. What you want to do is smush up the avocado and put in a little bit of salt and pepper. You see what I'm saying? You spread it on like it's mayonnaise. And then you cook the eggs and put that on top of there. You could also use you could also do avocado toast with um with a uh, with tomatoes and you put the salt and pepper on there afterwards or whatever. That's up to you. But you when you first make the avocado, make sure you put in a little salt and pepper. And I would say put some cheese on top of it too. That shit is delicious. That's some delicious stuff. It's delicious. Um next steel oats, steel cut oats with bananas, almonds and honey. That listen to what you can do with this. You can put this in a mason jar the night before. So you know your boo boo coming. You can put this in a mason jar. You can mix in like jello and sugar and all this different stuff. You can actually make steel oats in a jar and then all you got to do is heat it up. Y'all, it's not a joke. I know I'm talking about it is like flavorful. So this is like stuff where you just be like, Shantae, can I do this? Yes, you can. Go on Pinterest and they have like uh, steel cut oats, like different ways. And it's actually the healthiest one for you. 
This is the healthiest shit for you in your life. I'm not joking. Like, this break, these breakfast ideas are like 300 calories or less. And it will fill you up. Next, you got Greek yogurt and nuts and berries. Well, if you can't do the Greek yogurt, you can also do chia seeds and almond milk. And you can put some nuts and berries in there, too. So you just put, like, maybe a teaspoon, I mean, sorry, a tablespoon of chia seeds and put some almond milk in there. You put that in overnight, and then you can put in your nuts and berries in the morning. It is delicious. Uh, cottage cheese topped with nuts and fruit. Same thing. That is so good. Spinach and cheese omelet. Oh, my God. What? What? And I'm going to say put a little sweet potato in there, too. I actually mash your sweet potatoes. Like, I make the um, vegan cheese. So, if you make the vegan cheese with sweet potato, it is so good. And chia seed pudding with berries and honey. See, they got the chia seed pudding on there, too. So, that's why I put that on there. It's by the Fab Story. I put the wrong kind of... Uh, I just put the the uh, blog on there, the fabulousblog.co. But, you see, I'm saying healthy breakfast ideas. That's so good. So, let's talk about what working on a relationship really looks like. In the middle of this, I'm going to talk about how to respond to crisis because this will be the part that makes or break you. You know, somebody might be like, well, this person went to the hospital and this will happen to them in most of my relationships because of how they were stalking me. So it's like um, people would be my friends or be my boyfriend or whoever and I had to respond. I, I go into a crisis and then I have to respond to the crisis and move on. But the person that I'm with never actually gets to help me through the crisis or they are too immature to want to help me through the crisis. You see what I'm saying? So that's the problem. It's like, are they too selfish to want to help me through the crisis? So for people that really want to be around and work on the relationship, this would be important to you. You see, and I've been in that situation too where the other person is in crisis and I didn't want to put them in a negative mode by not by being there. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm doing it. So healing a relationship we have uh, with ourselves. So the first thing is that's that come to, you know, come to Jesus. Get to know yourself. Y'all, I need a cup of coffee. Healing the relationship we have with ourselves. So that means get to know yourself, period. Acknowledging our past traumas and doing our healing work. That's something else, too. You have to actually acknowledge what you did and what they did to you. So you have to actually come to come to terms with it. Uh, decoding our relationship patterns. You see, like, am I a good person to get along with? Yeah, you are. You know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes it could just be the people that are attracted to you or that need your healing. And so you have to start going to different places. Like you got to take a different side of the sidewalk. And it's not, y'all might think that just walking on the same side of the sidewalk is not a pattern that you need to change. And it actually is. Like, um, I was telling y'all, there's two hills. Up, it, it's like going over the bottom out in East St. Louis. One of them is like a steep hill and the other one is like an easy hill to climb. So, on a day that I just don't want to work out and I want to take it easy, I take the easy hill. And then on a day I want to get a workout in, I take the steeper hill because I know I'm going to feel the workout as I'm going. Y'all get what I'm talking about? So it's like, and, it, and it, if people ride their bikes up the hill too, so they know which side of the hill they need to take too. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? So it's just like, that's what that is. Taking a different side is going to help you burn some more muscles. It's going to help you start rethinking life. Going around. You see what I'm saying? It's like, and you doing that for your health. Uh, unlearning our childhood programming. That has been something where I never really got into the program, but I'm programmed. You know, like man, when my when I started thinking about all this voodoo stuff and how my grandmother be just like, y'all, we can't do this because of the voodoo. And to be in some fucking voodoo, you see what I'm saying? It's like these motherfuckers get on my nerve. That's why you have to detach from yourself, detach it from yourself. And me and my cousins start just being like, we don't believe in this stuff, and it is the truth. You, if you don't believe in it, some of you won't even notice. But if you know it's there, you know, you know, you know, you know. Practicing self-forgiveness. Ooh, that's straight from the Bible, baby. Let me tell y'all, some people would be like, I just got to go pray some more, and I got to go fix my hair back when I go to church. And you just be like, listen, lady, I'm for real. Just forgive yourself. Just stand there right now and forgive yourself. Love yourself for everything that you are right now. Love it. The drunkenness, everything. Love everything, honey. Love it all. Learning to accept our shadows, the parts of us we've rejected or denied. And that's the hardest part. The guilt. That'll be the guilt. Uh, honoring our boundaries and speaking our needs. That's something else you can do. Honor your boundaries and speaking your needs. I'm serious. 
take care of yourself with me. Like, she got a smart ass bitch. Yes, I fucking do. Especially when you over here fucking with me. Don't just start no argument with somebody else. If somebody is like really fucking with you, tell their ass off. Like it's just like stop doing that. And if ain't nobody messing with you, shut the fuck up. Cause ain't nobody trying to do nothing to you all the time. Like I'm looking at this lady, I'm like, you just create demons every fucking day, getting up arguing. You create demons talking about how you got a smart mouth and all this stuff. Don't nobody care. You don't have to do that all the time. I don't even think I got a smart mouth, but somebody gonna tell you I do. So why would I have to stand here and describe to you what type of mouth I got? Shut the fuck up. Practicing self-love and building our self-esteem. Um, That's it. Like It's like hug yourself. Hug other people. You know, like today it's raining. They say you need an umbrella. No, I don't. I need some fucking flip-flops with no socks. I need a pedicure so I can walk in the rain. I'm not joking. Like this is stuff that I really enjoy. And so it's just like this is something that I would like to be out there enjoying. And so, you know, everybody else don't like it. It's like, I love the rain. I'm sorry, I do. I like going to the store in the rain, everything. Practicing honesty and vulnerability. That's something else you can do. Remembering our whole and completeness. Practicing honesty and vulnerability. Be honest with yourself. Your honesty. Be vulnerable with yourself. You do not have to be vulnerable with everybody. Do not become like Marcus Boyd and say, oh, no. I put on the wrong shirt one day and then they write me. You know, like, don't do that shit. Remembering our whole and completeness. That's it. Remember your whole self and your completeness. And that's why I do the show the way I do. That's why it's like I'm not just looking at one of these one of these means. I'm looking at three or four or something like that. So it could like really help y'all. You see what I'm saying? In a full relationship. Because this is stuff that's really important. If this, if you want a true good relationship, this is the shit that's important. So how to respond to crisis. So thank you for telling me. So if somebody is in a crisis, you thank them for telling you that they were in a crisis. What set this off? You see, you ask, what what happened? What do you think happened? And don't sit there and be like, oh my God, you was wrong. Get the fuck out of my face. Seek what they are trying to communicate. <coughs> <coughs> what are they trying to tell you? So that's why I listen to Terry because it's like, even though most times she don't make sense, I listen. And that's what she was telling me that way today. It's like, you don't have to put me out because I was trying to make it here and I wasn't trying to leave in the first place. It's the truth. Check in and invite criticism. Did I miss something? So check in and just, okay, did I miss something? Like, what is it that I, what is it that happened? You know, maybe it was my problem or something. And it's like, really, it's not, but still, it could have been. Because in this other lady case, because she don't want to take blame for what she did, or who she is, or how her children are, then she keeps thinking that it's not her. And it is. It's her. Validate. No wonder. Uh, no Validate. No wonder you feel that way. Like, it's like, man, I would too. I feel that same exact way. Terry is like, I think that what's going on, he said, it's unfair. And I'm not joking. I think it's unfair for us to like, want her to be there on time, or close the gate, or always make up her bed. Like, you gotta go back and tell her everything for real. Because something else is going on. Uh, show concern. Don't force yourself to not react. You see, because some people tell you, don't. they say this in teaching, don't have a, a face. No, I want you. My kids, they be like, I'm on your side. Where the body at? Where the body at? Tell me where it's at. Do I need to put it in the refrigerator or the bathtub? What they do to you? You see what I'm saying? What are you wrong or what they wrong? Because, baby, we hiding that motherfucker. I'm not playing. Show concern. Don't force yourself. Okay. Signal openness. So concern, signal of openness. So be open. Like listen for real. Listen. 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 Take a break. Together for a um take a break. Go for a walk together or make a snack. Diffuse the intensity. Like bring the person level down. Uh you can also get them like a wetted blanket or something. That helps too. Remove access to method or make a plan and follow up. So, again, you tell them now, go around the corner. Don't go to them. Don't go through, straight through. This is how you learn if the person is really in a crisis or not. Because some people will still be going straight through and start another argument. you like, no, that was you. You see what I'm saying? This is how you start to find shit out. Number nine, that's when you really start to find it out. Like, okay, this person is lying. This nigga is lying you know so it's like don't watch it you know because some people do that uh self-examine and uh
be radically open to own experience. So just when you like, okay, can can I relate to this? Can do am I empathetic towards this? Like, have I been through this myself? Ask what a uh, social signal is being sent. So now it's like, okay, how do I help them? This is why I always like when my friends help me. They're the guys. Let me tell y'all. They just like we just go out to eat because I don't want to talk about this shit all the time. So it's like we go out to eat and they don't talk about nothing. And some people be like, girl, I be want to talk about it. Then you need, need to go out with your girlfriends because they will talk about it to death. They'll beat it with a fucking raw dead stick. And you will be still sitting there looking crazy and confused. When I go out with my friends, they just like give me ice cream or take me out on a good meal. Or sometimes they might buy me some shoes or something. And it's like, for real, we don't talk about nothing. We just have fun. We might go play miniature golf or something like that. It's just like, we just do some stuff. Like, it's like... I don't know. And I say, so do this with your kids, too. One day, Blake was, uh, Blake helped somebody with a bully. I took him for ice cream. I'm sorry. He was probably going to get put out of school. I still, fuck you, bitch. I took my son for fucking ice cream because that was the right thing to do. He was a hero. Uh, show your care with emotional appeal. Like, please stay. Be honest with yourself. Show trust. Believe. I believe in you and your recovery. Say, I don't want you to do this. Tell them, I don't want you to do that. Because sometimes you need to hear that. Y'all, I was about to marry my stepbrother. And Eric Henderson was on the phone. He's like, you don't love him. You love me. And that was it. I didn't marry him. So it's like, that was probably the best choice I ever made. Because he was just like Marcus. He was like going to drug me and try to get me on alcohol and all. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, sometimes you be thinking, man, I, you know, this is decision. If somebody say that to you, I'm talking about my whole heart stopped and I... Didn't end up marrying Eric at all. I never even saw him. But at the same time, it's like, for real? So I just was like, yeah. You know, like, I don't need to be doing this. Encourage use of self-control. So make sure you control yourself. Introduce self-inquiry. Invite challenge to use uh, crisis as discovery. So use that as a chance to discover what's going on. Remind the person of com- uh, of commitments, agreements, promises, emphasize their integrity. So it's like basically you teaching them to be good. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like do not go. Y'all, I'm talking about yesterday. What did I do want to do? It was like something I want, I want to smack that bitch in her face. And I actually had to sit there and just like not hit her. No, that was when I was at that job. I want to fuck them up at that job. Like I want to just take the boxes and throw that shit at them bitches. I'm talking about, I really did want to fuck them up, and I had to actually stand there and just remember, yeah, fuck it, just go. But yeah, when I was in that room, I wanted to fuck them up. I wanted to beat their ass in that fucking room and leave them right the fuck there. Y'all, I'm not joking. And I was like, okay, let me get the fuck out. Get um, get back up. Make sure a person has crisis resources. So make sure that the person is actually going somewhere. When I... Uh, when Montanil, when I first got out, put out the shelter at the thing, he got me a hotel room for one night, and then he took me straight to the, because uh, I don't like to not be in the shelter, like, especially, like, if it's women, I don't want to be raped, and I'm not about to fuck you for no fucking stuff, roof over my head, so, um, he brought me straight to the shelter, asked them to agree to a safety plan, if appropriate, that's only if they need help, so, like, Terry, my friend, need a safety plan, I probably don't need one. Connect to get contact info for persons, uh, other support people. Uh, what is it? Connect, get contact info for support. And 21, if suicidal cannot be um, reduced, if suicide, suicidality cannot be reduced, go with the person to an emergency room. So that's the other thing. Just make sure you go with them to the emergency room. So, well, how for, oh my God, this is a 30 minute show. Y'all, this is the. Okay, so Lent, this is the funniest shit that I have ever learned in my life. The healing at the pool, John 5, 1 through 16, is Friday. No, it's not. No, no, no. Not that one. Not that one. No, when they said, when it was like the, the, uh, is this the one? When they got mad at him on the set, okay, yes. Okay, so the day, so they got mad at Jesus at the healing at the pool because Jesus was working on, on the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is actually Saturday, but um, the Sabbath starts Friday evening into Saturday, right? So it's like they was like upset with him, you know what I'm talking about? Like that he would actually take time and work on that day. You know what I'm talking about? So it's actually Friday in a fucking movie. Like, 
Are you fucking kidding me? That is like so fucking amazing. Like I told y'all, we just rewrite the stories of the Bible and already Ice Cube is a genius. He did not know that he was like rewriting that story. I promise you he did. I promise you he did. That is like such a good reference. You know what I'm saying? Like it really is Friday in like a fucking synopsis or whatever. Like it is Friday. So I did. I put it out there on Amazon.com. Just, you know, watch Friday because that is the shit. Like it is hilarious. Like I was like, are you kidding me? That is Friday. That's Friday. Um. So anyway, they were like just there and he just still healed somebody. And the other part of it, Jesus is a doctor. Like it's like if we looking at this the whole time, like Jesus healed this person, Jesus healed that person, it's because Jesus is a fucking doctor. And an uh, enslaved doctor at the time. And then we looking at the part where he just was beating out the whole time. It's like nobody gonna beat you for healing people. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know. I think he just, like, got high or something. I don't know. Jesus was kicking it. I'm not playing, but the healing at the pool is really fried in a movie. Yeah, I'm not playing. It is, like, the truth. So, if you don't believe me, I want I dare you to read John 5, 1 through 16, and you're going to see what I'm saying. They actually got mad at him. Like, they was like, man, that man was like, you see what I'm saying? It's a little twin, twin, twin. But that's like a Jewish thing. And I was like, because everybody be like, um, some that lady, she kept saying, I don't work on Saturday. And it's like, I work all the fucking time. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just not uh, in a religion or anything. And that's because of that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? That's like just part of life. Like, that's how their life works. So it was like, they need time to rest. So that's it. But they got mad and I'm like, oh, please, we ain't working on no fucking Friday. Like, what you doing working on Friday? So, or Saturday, whatever day it's the Sabbath. Like, you know, that's what was going on. What you doing working on this day? Like, you know what I'm saying? Let that shit go. So, that was the last thing. And I was just, like, come to the conclusion. He really is just a doctor. That's it. That's all Jesus is. And so, it's like we take it like it's just something that's just, like, so amazing or whatever. But, yeah, he's just a doctor. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry to just give y'all the sad truth. That's what he is. And it's like that. It's not sad. It's actually amazing. It's amazing that he was a doctor. So that's it for my 32 minute show. I cannot believe my show is this long for today. Anyway, it's Shantae Brown, Sugar Talker, the Black Unicorns, telling y'all to please have a great day. You know, today is just like a day where I'm just like, please have a great day. Because I'm going to try to have a great day too. It's a full moon tonight, right? So anyway, have a good day.